Hi there, and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you don't already know me, if you're a new viewer today, uh, my name is Daniel Pino, and I am a longtime Microsoft Access MVP. Um, today's video actually just came out of wanting to have a little bit of fun with uh, coding, and I set out wanted to see how easily complex it would be to use VBA, so Excel, Access, whatever program I was using, to create Windows notifications. So those little pop-ups that show up, well, on my computer, because my taskbar is at the bottom, in the bottom right-hand corner. Um, they'll show up as icons, they'll show up as dialogues, they'll show up in the notification center, um, and they, they get attention um, in contrast to, let's say, Microsoft status bar that's at the bottom that no one pays attention to. I wanted something a little bit more dynamic, and the Windows notification falls into that category. Um, so I set out, you know, I knew I wasn't going to be the first person to ever explore this, and I did find VBA code to do it. So don't get me wrong, it can be done through pure VBA. Um, that isn't what I'm going to be showing you today because the pure VBA is very complex and extensive, uses a multitude of APIs. You have to get into conditional compilation because of 32 bit versus 64 bit and all that other fun stuff. And not that I'm scared of coding, but I just knew there had to be a simpler approach. Um, what I've learned over the past several years is that Microsoft has invested a huge amount of energy in PowerShell and uh, giving PowerShell an extensive ability to control basically anything in your Windows machine uh, with a single line or a couple lines of code. Typically, PowerShell is much more abridged than VBA ever will be. So I decided to delve down that path and I quickly came across several examples illustrating how within a few lines of PowerShell you could create notification windows. And hence today's video. I'm going to show you just how easily we can use VBA to execute simple PowerShell commands that will generate for us Windows notification messages. So since we have to execute PowerShell commands, the first thing I'm going to tell you is you need to turn towards my article on my website, uh, run PowerShell command, and you'll see the first section is what we're after, executing a PowerShell command from VBA, because we're not going to be uh, looking to return any values or information, so we just need to execute it. So. If you just scroll down, we want the second function, which is the final version. This is the first one, but there was still an issue that I fixed in the second one. So you simply copy paste this guy, and that's what I've done here in this module. Copy paste it here, and now we are ready with one simple public sub to now execute any PowerShell command we want. So let's dive into the matter. I've created a couple subs here that all basically do the same or very similar thing. So let's look at what the difference is and why. Okay, first of all, these two guys are basically identical. We're gonna look at the difference in two seconds. Let's execute it. Let's see what this actually achieves for us. What am I talking about when I say notification, Windows notification? So if we just run the sub, You'll see here, we get this beautiful notification here, and it will even be in the notification area as well. Okay, and if you go over the icon, it disappears. It also would close the notification if you hover over it. So that's what I'm going after today. That's what I want to achieve. The code is very simple. I'm going to step through it in two seconds. First, I'm going to just differentiate what is the difference between these two, because they will provide you or achieve the exact same notification. And I just want to make one precision that I haven't made up to this point in time when we're talking about PowerShell commands. You'll notice here, so the code, the actual code is all identical. The arguments being supplied are identical. Planning database, planning data. Okay, so that, no difference there. What you're going to notice here is I use semicolons at the end of each line. 
And a semicolon in PowerShell means it's the end of a command. So because of this, this, this sequence here will work. You'll notice here, however, I'm not using a semicolon. And if I were to do that here and remove the semicolons, it would no longer work. This would be interpreted as a single line command and it wouldn't work anymore. The way around that is to now break them each line into a separate line. And what I've done here, since I'm not using the semicolon, is instead I'm using here the VBCRLF, creating a line feed, breaking each, each one of these lines into a separate line. So the choice is yours, how you approach it, but I just wanted to really make that emphasis on this point. Semicolon really separates each command versus here I'm creating line feeds, line breaks myself through VBA. But beyond that, the code is identical, okay? So just, you know, the basics here of the code, because it's basically going to be very similar code throughout every example. Let's just understand, we need to get a couple libraries to work with, okay? So the Windows form and the drawing. In this case here, the approach I've taken is I wanted to demonstrate uh, visually to the user the, let's say, access icon, the Excel icon. So he has a bit of an idea of where this message is originating from. To do that, I'm using this here where I find the path of the process. And to do that, I get process MS access for access, right? So if it was Excel, it would be Excel. If it was Word, it'd be WinWord. If it was Outlook, it'd be Outlook. So I'm passing it the process and it has to be a process that's running because we're using get process. So it's going to go and look for an active process. So in my case, I'm in access. So I'm using MS access. It will find that path. And we're going to use that path in just a second. Then here is where we start the actual notification, creating our notification. So it's a new Windows uh, form notify icon. Okay, so we're starting that. Now I'm going to pass it the icon. Well, I'm using this library to go get the associated icon for the path. The path was what? We created our path variable up here, which was it goes and finds the path to my process, my MS access process. So what I'm telling it on this line is associate the icon for the process here, MS access. So go find me Microsoft accesses icon, and that's going to be the icon for my notification. Then here, we just give a string as the title for the uh, notification, then the actual text for the notification. Then we tell it, yes, make this notification true. We want it to be visible. And then here, the delay. How long does it stay visible or not? And finally, so we've built our command up, our string. We just pass it to our PowerShell execute uh, subroutine. And that's it. You come down to this function, you'll see it's the exact same thing. Like I said, the only differentiating factor is here. We're using semicolons. Here, I'm using VBCRLF. Okay, so let's just, uh, I'll take the second one. It achieves the same thing. Let's run it and just look at exactly what we've just discussed. And you'll see here the access icon that I was talking about the planning database here, which is the title, and then the balloon tip text here. Okay, like I said, if you hover over the icon, it goes away. Or you press the X, it closes it as well. The next one I wanted to just illustrate, so very similar, but there is one important difference on this bit of code is here I'm not going to be doing this whole path thing and then extract the icon from my process. Instead, for the icon, I'm going to use the system drawing icons and I'm simply going to use the information icon. You could use error, warning, uh, question, the, you've got a whole multitude of different ones you can use, just like uh, VBA's uh, message box. And we run this one. You'll see here, because I use the information icon, it's no longer the access icon that appears. It's the information icon, but the same text in this case. Okay, 
so I've got the basics down. I can now generate a notification very easily. I can control the icon that's displayed. I can change the text. But this is all hard coded. So let's take this to the next level. Let's look at making this, turning this into a procedure that I can call as required from any other code. And that's what I've done here. So I'm going to have two different approaches. So let's explore each one of them. The first one here, I'm going to use create windows notification. I'm going to pass it a title and message and an icon. The code is very similar, except now I'm passing, like I said, variables. So I'm going to have to separate them out and make them uh, use them. And the same thing for the icon. But all of this code here, you're very familiar with. So let's test this guy out. Title goes here. Then we do our actual test. Done. And then the icon. And you'll see up here in the comments, I give you a listing of the different options. So let's say to th this is an error. So we're going to come here and do error. And we press enter to run it. And we wait two seconds. And there it is. And as you can see, my previous notification still remains there because I never cleared it. But the title goes here, done. And now it's an error. So it's getting the error icon. Let's make those go away. So now we have a single line of code that we can execute from within any other procedure that we have in our database to make these notifications appear. The next one, however, instead of using, you know, the uh, icons, the error information, if that isn't what you want, and you want to stick with the application icon, like I had previously, the MS Access, the MS Excel, whatever application you're in at the moment of running this code, because this code can run from Excel, can run from Outlook, can run from PowerPoint, etc. Well, I made this guy instead. And this one, how it works, you'll notice, you pass it a title and a message, but you're not passing in an icon. Why not? Because if we come down to that whole issue of the path, so find the path to the process and then extract its icon. I'm now automatically using a function, get application process name. So it's going to evaluate the current application's name and then get the proper process a name for it. How does that work? Well, as you see here, application process name, it takes an optional application name. So you can either pass it one if you wanted, or if you omit this, as I've done here, it will then automatically just go and get the application name when it's run. So this will work in Excel automatically. It'll work in Outlook automatically. And then it comes through a, simply a case statement to go get the proper process name. And then it goes and finds the ID and pulls the path from that. So this is all transparent to the user. There's nothing for them to do. Right now I have it coded for the office applications. This case statement could be further expanded, obviously. And then that's the exact same code as above where we're passing variables into building our PowerShell command string. So if we take this, actually we don't even need to, we can just do that. Come here and say the second one and we run it. You will see that it appears here and now it has automatically identified that this is running within access in gone and extracted the Microsoft access icon automatically. And then it just passed the title and the text that I wanted to display. So there you have it. A couple different ways of approaching, creating windows notifications with ease, with minimal code. Um, basically, you know, whether it be this sub or this sub, you just copy paste it into a module and now with one line of code you can create notifications anytime you want in any other procedure of your choosing and the beauty here is it works throughout office so like i said word outlook powerpoint excel access they can all have this capability with ease i should mention that currently 
I do not have an article on this, so all you have currently is obviously what you see on the screen. I will endeavor to create an article in the next couple of days and will update this video with the link when it is actually released. Um, I hope this has been somewhat informative and uh, help some of you, uh, you know, raise the bar a little bit on your database, maybe make it a little bit more interesting and dynamic to the users. And we will see you in the next video, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. Take care.